Texas. Arlington, Texas. Can you make some noise and raise the roof in this place for Houston, Texas own Anthony Hall? <laughs> One of my favorite producers is Ryan Leslie. And so um, I, wanted, I wanted a song like that that I can just do like a little shoulder bop to because I can't dance, you feel me? I was in the shower one day and I just got this little melody, this little melody you know? I said, you never leave, oh no. On my album, you know, and I think we're gonna have a good time tonight. Y'all ready to have fun tonight? Let me hear you if you wanna have some fun. I think at this time I knew that I was going in to record my first album, my first solo project. And so I didn't want to come in just with like nothing, you know? And so when I walked in the studio, they was like, who got something? I was like, me, I want to be the first one to say, me, I got it, I got it. And so I started humming this, you know, this this groove and Eric got on the, the, the you know, got in logic and started like mapping out this beat. Um, and within 10 minutes, we had never leave. You know, it was, also from the point that God had always promised me that he would give me the desires of my heart um, and that he would always be there for me. And as we were embarking on this first album, I was reminded of all the things that I had prayed for. At this point, I had become successful in business. I had secured my family's future. You know what I'm saying? I had done all the things that I had been praying for. And God just reminded me while I was in that shower, like, yo, I told you I would never leave you nor forsake you. That reminder just made me, you know, really humble myself and say, God, you know, I'm grateful that I have this position and I want to pay homage to that by writing this song. But, you know, as I wrote the song, I wanted it to be a song that people can groove to. And I think a lot of times with my music, you know, people uh, might lose themselves in the groove, but the wording is very heavy, you know, in my music, you know, and so, you know, that song Never Leave is just a promise to God that when people leave you, that when things fade away, um, that when friendships end, that God said that he would never leave you and that he would always be there. Let's do it. I need your help, Dallas. Uh, Y'all say, say. You're
forsaken, that's his promise. That's what you promised me. He said he never leaves, eh? Said you never leave me, said you never Dallas, how y'all feeling? That's his promise. That's uh. what you now listen, he not gonna play them drums, and we're gonna groove for 30 seconds. Y'all ready? Let's go, say, say. God has a real funny way of having you set yourself up to console yourself in moments of need. You know what I'm saying? Long nights seem even longer since you went away. If you would have asked me two years ago when we cut this album, um, if I would have needed that song in the way that I do now, I would have said, no, I'm, you know, I'm good. This song is for everyone else. But as we are like taking this journey and talking about Roosevelt, I'm finding out that all of these songs God had, write, God had me writing for me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I'm in a place where I need um, to hear the songs that I wrote for other people. And so it's just like one of those things where the songs have to minister to you before they minister to anyone else. We had this Prince vibe that we were getting into, you know what I'm saying? Prince is one of my favorite artists, you know what I'm saying? Kiss is one of my favorite songs ever. And I remember Freddie saying, yo, we need a stadium song, a song that you can sing that people can put lights up and um, it can go out, you know? Um, and it's just a big song. And so we began to, um, you know, do See You Again. And Freddie um, wrote this from a perspective of his father, missing his father. And the first word, he, the first thing he said was, one thing I know for sure, I know that I miss you. And long nights seem even longer since you went away. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Madison came in on the back end um, and featured on this song with me and really took it next level um, um, and did what he does that is so special. Um, Madison can hear something and immediately take it to another level. Um, any kind of production, anything, you know, and he's a great producer and songwriter in his own right. Um, and so we did see you again, man. It's not really gospel, like, if you listen to it, um, it's not a church song, but what is church? You know what I'm saying? I think the gospel helps people. And so all of these songs help people, you know what I'm saying? That's what makes it gospel music. One thing I know for sure that I miss you Long nights seem even longer Since you went away I don't know where to start So many memories Truthfully it breaks my heart Cause you're not here myself just made it even harder nothing can replace you I know you would tell me to be strong yeah my granny told me why to pray I give me a dollar just to hear you say again Oh
Um, I wanted to make Roosevelt a record that just made you feel good, like you can dance to and just have fun. We don't have fun no more in church, man. Everybody, everything's serious. Everybody want to cry or everybody want to run. Well, my knees are bad and I'm feeling good today. I don't want to cry and I don't want to run. I want to have fun. Three, two, one. Now listen, back in the day they used to let us do altar call, man, but they don't let us do it no more because y'all don't know how to act. Y'all know y'all don't know how to act when y'all get a mic in y'all hands. But I imagine what would happen if they let me do it. And I would walk up to the stage. This is what I would say to them. Give it out of the car. He's ahead of my life. Um, I had let everyone know, like, I wanted to do, like, this is a funk album. Zach in DW started working on his little groove. It almost sounds like, um, Jana Jackson's, you know, da da da, da uh, like, you know what I'm saying? But um, we turned that into a funk kind of vibe, you know what I'm saying? And Zach is, man, Zach is a super talented producer, man. Like, so they started playing this little funk groove, and uh, me and Freddie was sitting there, and Freddie always looks at me, he's like, what you feeling? And I'm like, yo, I wanna talk about how church used to be when I grew up, you know what I'm saying? So back in the day, they used to let us do altar calls. And you know, whenever I do it live, I always say, but they don't let us do it no more because y'all don't know how to act, you know? And so all of that is in the song, you know? If you sat in your service and they did altar call service, you are guaranteed for someone to say something that you're not supposed to say, you know what I'm saying? And so um, I wanted to invite people to give their testimony. So that's how we came up with, is there one? In that second part of the testimony, it says, I was at the red light and the, bu the bus was coming fast. I couldn't go nowhere because there was cars on my, and it's like, I'm almost about to say something I'm not supposed to say, but then the horn blows. And it's like, that's representative of like the pastor saying, hey, you can't say that, you know what I'm saying? And so I really want to make authentic music to my experience. And when we released that as a single, that gave us a hard time at some radio, you know, because they were like, well, we can't play this because you're about to cuss. And I'm like, well, I didn't cuss. It's, it's, this really happens every day in church. You know what I'm saying? Um, and Uncle G, my manager, was like, well, you know, we're going to have to change the wording. And I was like, no, like, I don't want to change the words. Let's keep going and make them come back to us. You know what I'm saying? And that's what happened. Once the song took off, then everybody came around and was like, yo, we need the song at radio. We need this song. We want, we want this song to go. And it's like, um, everybody's favorite song from the record is Alter Cause, Straight James Brown Funk. Three, two, one, uh. Now listen, back in the day they used to let us do Alter Call, man, but they don't let us do it no more because y'all don't know how to act. Y'all know y'all don't know how to act when y'all get a mic in your hands. But I imagine what would happen if they let me do it. And I would walk up to the stage. This is what I would say to them. Uh. Give it out of the car. He's ahead of my your chance if you want to join me
Now listen, these last three years been kind of rough on me, y'all. And in these last three years, God gave me three words that can sum up these last three years in my testimony. Y'all ready? I need your help with this. It says this. Say, I made it. I made it. I made it. I'm all right. So there are a few songs that we did for the live record that we're talking about with the Roosevelt Live that aren't on Roosevelt. Um, but since we're talking about Madison, we could talk about his effect on my music. If it had not been who I almost lost it. You can hear them all through Roosevelt album, but these songs in particular, um, G-O-O-D um, and that name are literally um, writing wise, mostly all Madison, you know what I'm saying? And it just shows you how um, how we are like connected um, in spirit because no matter who is writing or who is producing or who's doing what, um, it's all the same vibe when we come together. And on G-O-O-D, Eric sent the track in and it was like, yo, that matches the vibe we want perfectly. And I gave it to Madison. I was like, Madison, you, you gonna know what to do with this. And he came with the, you know, the G-O-O-D. That's crazy, you know what I'm saying? And, um, and so when we do it live, I pay homage to the music that I listen to. So Mars Day and the Time, that was, listen, that was a thing back in the day, you know what I'm saying? Still is, and so we wanted to pay homage to that and to that sound. And Teddy Riley is one of my favorite producers, period, of all time. And so I wanted to pay homage to him and his sound um, by doing a New Jack song, and, and that name is um, that song. So, um, but you see the effect that community and team has on music. You know, I work better in a, in a, in a community. And the thing about it is, is that I'm not I'm, I'm so confident in myself and my abilities that I'm not afraid to allow others to shine even on my behalf, you know? And I'm nothing without the team that I have around me. Dearly beloved, now we all gathered here. We're gathered here just to give God praise. Y'all ready to do it? Let's go. Oh, 
first song um, that I would say I wrote for this project, and I didn't even know that was for this project, was um, actually one of the first singles I released. It's called Loving Me, and it's what I call R&B Jesus. It's all right, you can groove, you can groove. Uh. So says this. Uh. I don't wanna go nowhere uh. without you alone. one of those, you know, songs that set the standard for what Roosevelt was to become. Um, it's very soulful, very classic, almost temptation vibes, you know what I'm saying? Um, because I knew I wanted to make music that would last forever um, and not just a trendy sound or not just something that is here today, gone tomorrow. Um, and I love that kind of music too, you know what I'm saying? Um, but I wanted to make the music that I heard growing up and be authentic to myself. Was, I was searching, I was searching for my sound and searching for um, my place, you know, in the industry at that time. Some things had happened, you know, um, I was writing songs for other people, not getting the credit, we all know how that goes. Um, and so I wanted to do something for myself. I did Loving Me, um, it, initially it was a sample um, that I chopped up and played some instruments over and I wrote the song and recorded it. Um, and that was five years before we even thought about doing Roosevelt. And I put that song in a vault of songs that I had. And when I got into the studio and everybody was like, so, okay, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna, you know, how are we gonna start off this Roosevelt record? Um, I went into my vault and pulled out. I said, there's a song that I wrote five years ago that I think is still relevant. And I played Loving Me and everybody was like, yo, we're doing that right now. Like, let's just do it. And um, I had Mike, Michael Dixon in the studio. And I was like, bro, I think, the way that you're singing, he, he didn't really do like R&B Jesus style music. Um, but I, I always thought that his voice would fit um, a song like that. And so we wrote the second verse and um, it, it's actually my best streaming song by far. Listen, it's gonna feel real good to you, you ready? Uh, let's go.
Jack. Go Go is the most fun music that there is. And you put on a Go Go track. You listen. You put on doing the butt in church. The mother's gonna be doing the butt. I don't care what nobody say. I've seen it happen because when miracle starts, everybody's like, oh, like it's like a. I don't know if that man. Maybe that's a spirit. Maybe I was wrong. Cause some about the Go Go beat make your hands go up and your back go in a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, you know, uh, Freddie was like, man, let's do a go-go song. We gotta do something go-go. We gotta have that go-go beat. And, uh, and literally, I still have the footage in my phone of when we started playing this groove and everybody went crazy. And so, Freddie's like, okay, so, Freddie's like, in the studio, he makes like, random shouts and stuff. He'd be like, hollering, you know what I'm saying? And so when, you know Freddie feeling whatever's going on when he starts screaming. You know what I'm saying? So Freddie's like screaming like, ah, like, ah, uh, uh. like, I don't, I don't know what, what that condition is called, but it's like that, like that kind of thing. And so he's sitting in the car like, oh, uh, ah, oh, they're going to laugh at me. I'm Freddie. I love you, man. But it was great because then he came out the, uh, he came from the, out the corner and he said, yo, I got it. I got it. I got it. Two fish, five loaves of bread. Tell me, are you hungry? You know what I'm saying? Sit down in the grass, be still, don't worry. He's about to do a miracle. And everybody like stopped and was like, yo, every church in America is gonna sing this song. I don't know if that really happened, but man, when we do this song, it goes insane. And, and that really set the tone for how great this album was going to be. Like we had a song that we knew would work. It's insane to think that in a studio of nothing that we created that and that we created a song that wherever we sing it, people go crazy. And they know, I, we, we did a concert and Byron Cage was sitting there and he's like singing the song. I was like, wow, I didn't know he knew the song. He's like, man, this comes on the radio all the time. And to just hear somebody say like, your song was on the radio. I remember always wanting that to happen. You know what I'm saying? So I'm forever grateful um, to everybody because you know, you have to have great music. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you want to stay in the industry. And I think that's one of the greatest songs I've ever been a part of. It's a miracle. Can we put that groove? Let's put that groove. Uh.
Y'all listen, because y'all been so good, I want to do it again. But y'all got to have to sing it with me. Y'all ready? Let's make a choir. Huh? Um, my dad, he, um, he always said that Roosevelt would be the, like, he knew that it would be great. And, um, he, um, right before he passed, like, um, two weeks before he passed, we had a conversation about the record. And, um, he said, son, um, I really believe that you're going to win a stellar. You're going to get nominated for it. Like, you're going to get something. You know, um, I grew up, I, my goal was never a Grammy. Like, that was never a goal for me. Never, never, a, never a American Music Award. Never a BET Award. Never MTV Award. Um, for me, my goal has always been a stellar because that's all I knew growing up. And so to some people that might not mean a lot, but that's my goal, you know, um, and what I do. And my dad knew that, cause that's all we would talk about. We would watch the cell and he would say, son, one day you're gonna be on that stage. Um, son, one day they're gonna call your name. Um, son, one day um, I'm gonna sit there and watch you give your acceptance speech. And, um, and we talked about that often. And, um, and so, yeah, he loved the record. He would sit there and watch me perform with just like a sparkle in his eye because he knew that his son was doing exactly what he was made for, you know? And so, um, so yeah, um, he thought it would be great. And, um, and hopefully on the other end of this comes the nominations or an award, but even if I don't get it, um, I just know my dad is proud of me and um, he's up there telling God, like, you gotta listen to my son record, you hear me? Cause it's good, so, yeah. And I want y'all to sing this song with me. It goes like this, y'all ready? It says, Now I tried it, and I know, and I know that he's all right. Uh, I tried it, and I know, and I know that he's all right. Everybody say, I tried it.
then I'm alright. Let that be your testimony. If he's alright, then I'm alright. Hey, if he's alright, then I'm alright. Hey, you said, you said, if he's alright, then I'm alright. My first music video from Miracle was shot by Vincent Powell, um, who's an amazing director right here out of Houston um, um, and a good friend of mine. And, and through that process, I met my production um, coordinator or main, my main producer and everything I do Broadway, um, who is amazing at what she does. I assembled the goats, you know, man. Um, I wanted to work with people who were great um, and who either had an opportunity and was on the backside of it, or people who were hungry for another opportunity, you know? And so um, I met this rat pack of guys um, kind of organically just through relationship. Everything in my life that happens is very relational. And so everybody that I meet is through a, a relationship or some kind of connection. And so, you know, there's Michael Dixon, uh, one of my songwriters, uh, Freddie Fontaine, man, who is a, a crazy, amazing, creative, um, producer and songwriter, um, Chelsea Simone, who is my main vocalist, you know, she's all over my records. Um, and then, you know, we have Zach Fisher. Zach is a crazy musician, man, he's really good. I, I don't think this project would have happened without him. Um, Eric King, 
who was like my right hand in the studio. He's kind of like an extension of the things that I can't do. I like keeping people around me that can fill the gaps that I can't fill myself. You know what I'm saying? And so Eric, you know, is definitely that guy. Um, and then you talk about my musicians, for real, you know, um, first DW. Dwayne D.W. Wright is one of the greatest bass players in the world. I always say that um, because he's a legend, you know, in this game. He's a living legend. And then Cody Smith, who plays for Toby, is insanely great on the guitar, man. Um, um, and Aldarian Peanut Mays on the drums. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My little brother gets on my nerves, but I love him. Um, but, you know, my band is um, really rounded out um, a group of guys who I don't even have to look at when, when we're performing. They just kind of know what I'm about to do and we develop a relationship over that. And then we kind of brought in Madison on the back end and Madison is one of the greatest singers um, and one of the greatest um, songwriters um, that is coming up, man. Um, and he has number one records and all this kind of stuff. But when we get together, it's not about what we've done individually. It's really about what we can do, you know, as a team. And so when I met Dom, um, Dominique, the co-owner uh, of Vegan Bay, she had been through some of the same things, you know, jaded by industry that didn't accept her or want her because of her sound and her look and things like that. And so we just came together and said, well, let's create our own. Let's create our own entity that we can do what we want to do. Like we can become who we want to become in this industry and be successful at it. You know what I'm saying? And so that's what we did. We created Vegan Bay out of the need for creative freedom um, and ownership 